Fallout 4 survival mode is usually quite difficult, forcing you to adapt your playstyle to focus on staying well fed, always having drinking water, keeping stocked up on medicine and ammo, all while avoiding the extra damage enemies can cause. But at least you normally have an entire wasteland to explore to gather all of these crucial items for survival. But what would happen if you didn't have the entire wasteland to explore and were instead locked in the tutorial area of Sanctuary Hills? Could you gather enough to survive the many obstacles this game mode throws your way? And not only just survive, but could you turn this sleepy town into a thriving destination all without ever stepping foot outside of its boundary? Well, let's find out how much I can do with these limitations, and who better to try this with than the Messiah. He's been well crafted for survival in its most cowardly form, using some very interesting stats. You may be looking at these very confused, but don't worry, this is the perfect build to enable my master plan. To begin the challenge, I first need to get to Sanctuary, so after sprinting away from my wife and child under threat of a nuclear bomb, seeing my family ripped apart after a murder kidnapping, and thawing out like tonight's chicken dinner, I emerge into the vault. Technically, Vault 111 isn't part of Sanctuary, so I'm not allowing myself to collect any loot inside, apart from one item which I'm allowing for the sake of the challenge. What is this item? Well, it's a piece of junk, which just so happens to be the only possible way to get circuitry. Don't like it? Well, I make the rules, and we'd all be very bored without this exception. After clearing all of the enemies in the vault and emerging, it's time to drop everything I picked up. A final look at a world I'll never explore, and a fleeting thought about my son who's alone in an apocalyptic wasteland, it's time to begin my journey. And after crossing the bridge into Sanctuary, I'm stuck. It's now a race against time to ensure I survive. So, you're alone in Sanctuary, with no resources or experience. It's time to get busy. Starting with a conversation with Codsworth for some quick XP, and to activate him just in case I'm too weak to take out a few houseflies alone, followed by everyone's favourite Bethesda activity, becoming a loot goblin. Starting with a visit to our old home to grab the special book for a boost to charisma. What, you thought I was being sentimental by coming back here? Also picking up a fancy tuxedo. You've got to look good if your master plan is to start a cult after all. Next up on the shopping list is a weapon, and thanks to this bizarre rule from the time of muskets, I can find a duffel bag on the roof of a house equipped with a gun and some molotovs, and it's all perfectly legal. If Fallout was set in England, I'd be stuck with a cricket bat right now. Before I can get stuck into looting everything in sight, there's a bug problem to take care of, so I start dispatching the local bloatfly population. Also, take on the beautiful and tender radiated fly meat. I didn't say survival would be pretty, or easy for that fact, as I get my health ravaged by a couple of basic flies and cower away. Of course, flies aren't the only delicacy which can postpone my starvation. Giant cockroaches are also on the menu, so I dispatch them and harvest their meat. And it's best not thinking about what they've eaten to survive. With the bug population exterminated, the looting can commence, and I take anything not nailed down. I spend far too much time picking up every junk item, stealing some cap stashes which will be used for a plan of mine, and breaking into some safes for extra XP and useful weapons and ammo. And don't forget to pick up tin food, I'm sure it's perfectly fine when its best before was centuries ago. With the houses picked clean, I've bought myself some time, but I need to focus on getting everything needed for survival. First up is water, so after depositing all of the junk into the workbench, I can craft a water fountain for a couple of steel, and plummet straight into this wall. Somehow, this provides me with an endless source of radiation-free clean water. Why haven't the people of the wasteland thought of this before? The water crisis may be solved, but food is a huge issue. With only a few tins and meat from household bugs, I've got a few days of rations. But there's a renewable source of fruit and veg tucked away behind another house. The only issue is, it won't grow without a settler assigned to it. This is where an issue appears. There's not enough food to keep me full for more than a few days, and each piece I eat gives me radiation. So, I need to do something about this, and my best idea is to start a cult. I just need to do some levelling for this plan to work. First, I build a bed, which should increase my XP gain after a good night's sleep by 10%, and then pick up the Idios of Amperk, which gives 3 times XP randomly for any action, with the chance increasing the stupider you are. And with the Messiah having a whopping 1 intelligence, this should happen quite a lot. Armed with a way to increase XP, I just need a way to farm it, and that's where the wonderful settlement system comes into play. 
so I just need to deconstruct every single piece of scrappable material in Sanctuary to gather materials. I know this is some truly riveting gameplay you're watching and you really don't want me to speed it up, but I was genuinely doing this for two hours, so for the sake of your viewing experience, it's a nice and condensed 30 seconds. With a town's worth of junk, I can start levelling up using the tried and tested method of spam building, and my item of choice is the humble shelf. Costing two wood, I can build thousands of them, and each one has a chance for three times the XP to appear. So I spend the next 20 minutes building them, and it appears I lost my mind during this section of the challenge. I don't want to set the world on fire. I just want to start a flame in your heart. Why did I decide this was a good idea? My finger is sore, and I want to uninstall. With all of the shelves constructed, I get to level 9 and can take some perks to increase survivability and to help achieve my future plans. Taking Lead Belly to reduce rads from the food I'm eating, Mr. Sandman so I can quietly dispatch sleeping people, which will make sense if my plan works, Medic so medicine can keep me alive much more efficiently down the line, and finally the first perk and local leader, but I need to be level 14 for the next one so I get back to work. And so begins the fun of scrapping the shelves I built to refund half of the material, which is even worse for my poor digits than building them was. But to pass some of the boredom of being alone, I even created a couple of friends, and dappered them up with some fancy garments I found around town. And there's even more evidence I lost my mind. Well hello and welcome to my corner of the wasteland. Look an exquisite madam if you don't mind me saying. With the shelves eventually scrapped, I started the spamming process all over again, and at level 11, upgraded the Idiosa Van perk so it gives me 5 times XP every time it pops, which should cut down the time it takes to level 14. I even spice things up and swap from shelves to toolboxes. This section of building was a welcome treat. It really kept my mind well occupied. I got spurs that jingle, jangle, jingle, jangle, jangle, as I go riding merrily along, jingle, jangle. And after several exciting rounds of this method, I get to level 14 and can take the second perk in Local Leader, which lets me build stores within the settlement. Now I just need the people in caps to open them. Stores are the only thing that guarantee my long term survival, so gathering 200 caps to open the cheapest option is now the priority. But there's no more caps to be found in Sanctuary, so I need a way to attract them here. And how is that done you may ask? Well, it's by attracting settlers and conducting an orchestrated culling after robbing each new arrival of their worldly possessions, of course. And with my only friends leaving due to my ever-decreasing sanity, well, some new faces will be a nice change. What the, what the hell are you... No! 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 In order to attract settlers to my location so they can part with their worldly possessions, I need to create a recruitment beacon. But there's one thing I'm missing, and that's Crystal. Thankfully, there's one place in Sanctuary with a chance to spawn Crystal, and it's all thanks to our friendly neighbourhood Doomsday Prepper. Around the back of the house I find the duffel bag of guns, there's a basement which can be broken into, which just so happens to have a crate featuring a rotating loot table. So if there's no items which can be broken down into Crystal, well, I can just reload, and there's another chance. So that's exactly what I do, over and over again until I find one of the items I'm looking for. Save scumming has never looked so good. The bunker also has a few other useful items, with the highlight being these gold bars which I can sell down the line for some very easy caps. And with this cleared out and crystal in hand, I can prepare for some new settlers to arrive. I set up the recruitment beacon and turn it on, and now all I need to do is make this place look attractive to wary travellers and set up somewhere to hide the bodies of anyone who suffers an accident while working in this dangerous suburb. First up on the to-do list is a fancy gate and guard tower. The only catch is, I'm in absolutely no danger from outside raids because I've never started the Minuteman quest. But the defence keeps people happy, and if the guard is watching outside, well, they'll never suspect I'm up to no good. Next up, some lovely accommodation for settlers to enjoy, so I construct two houses with an array of home comforts. It's just a shame anyone who decides to sleep in the smaller house probably won't make it through the night. Settlers also need some fresh water to be happy, and it just so happens that water purifiers add water that isn't used into the workbench. 
so I've got a steady flow of passive income heading to my workbench every day, ready to sell when I can open a shop. Food is the next town upgrade, and with the settler just arriving, I can put him to work harvesting fruit and veg, which also goes into the workbench if there's enough to go around. So eventually, I'll have a never-ending stock of food, all without ever needing to lift a finger. I did say I need a place to hide the bodies of my capstash donors, so I throw up a completely inconspicuous shack to store the town's meat supply. There's no way anyone would be interested in looking inside with that sign. And just in time we have our second resident, so let's relieve him of his caps and put him right to work protecting the town from the imaginary enemies we may encounter. Now you might have seen the later settler only had 5 caps, and my total is 46 caps of his generous donation, so I've got to entice a lot more people to my cult like paradise, without raising too many red flags to scare them away. This led me down a bit of a rabbit hole, and I found an interesting Reddit post about how to attract settlers, and it's all done with a bit of a math formula. To not bore you to death, there's a base 10% chance of a settler joining each day, plus half of your happiness stat is converted into a percentage and added on. Then if population is less than 5, you subtract the population number from 5 and times it by 10%. So here's a couple of quick math formulas from a Reddit settlement genius showing the chance for a spawn, and I can see that only having two settlers who provide food and defence give me a very good chance of someone joining each day. So now I just need to try and keep the population down while keeping everyone happy. And what better way to launch a campaign to improve my local area than adding a number of new jobs for settlers and a firing range to keep any gun nuts on side. Now it's a waiting game, just hoping happiness increases and people arrive. And after a day, a new face joins the group. Welcome to town. Did I mention there's an entrance fee of all of your caps? For the first few days, I leave the settlers alone so happiness increases and get to work on a few odd jobs. Expanding the farm anytime crops appear so I can increase the amount of food stored each day. And adding some extra water purifiers to hike up the production of bottles I can sell. Then after the population reaches 5, well things take a bit of a darker turn. Shh, stay asleep, don't worry, it's all a dream. Come on now, let's get you hidden away in the meat store, I'm sure everyone will enjoy barbecue tomorrow. And of course, if a couple of new people suddenly go missing in the night never to be seen again, well, it's a dangerous world, or maybe they just left. But I doubt it'll ever be questioned by my residents. Because of the implication. At this point in the challenge, it becomes a race against time. While I've now got enough food and water to survive indefinitely, well, I'm slowly dying of rads with each meal. So I need to balance happiness and population to get people joining as fast as I can, to provide enough caps to open a shop before I die. So I'll condense the next section, which literally took 7 hours in real life until I reached the 200 cap amount I needed. After my night of killing, happiness took a nosedive, so to appease the people, I created a lovely little gym area to win them back on side. After a few days, no one had joined, so I got bored and decided to antagonise creatures across the river for fun. After nearly dying and just about killing a couple of dogs, I arrived back and someone had turned up. So I collected my caps, quietly had an accident with a sharp object, hid the evidence, and then had an epiphany. I had to leave the buildable area of the settlement for the game to allow new settlers to turn up. Whenever I spent the day inside the green build boundary, nothing happened. So I now had a new routine. I'd target anything over the river to try and get some extra loot and some sort of mental stimulation. Return to the settlement to check if anyone had turned up, and rinse and repeat. I slowly started getting visitors and caps, but the game also started to act a little strangely. The weight benches I installed were seemingly possessed by the souls of my many victims. I guess even in the afterlife, some people still want to get those gains in. I slipped further into insanity, and would use a dress to disguise my nefarious nightly visits to settlers. And they also seemed to get suspicious of me, refusing to sleep in my presence. But I don't blame them, this sight would be rather concerning. And despite never leaving the boundaries of the Sanctuary Island, a bunch of mole rats somehow appeared in town and attacked. But who am I to turn down a free meal? An iBot paid me a visit, so I killed it for some new scrap. I don't know if this is a quest given robot or not, but when new things happen while you're trapped in Groundhog Day, well let's just say they stand out. Oh, and a random Brahmin turned up with a settler, 
which I had to adopt after that person mysteriously left town. I'd never seen that happen naturally in all of my years on this game, but it'd be a blessing in disguise down the line. Eventually, after many hours of balancing the happiness of the town and my growing conscience because of the now fly-covered pile I created, I had the 200 caps I needed for the shop and the challenge opens up for some fun. With local leader 2 and 200 caps, I've got enough money to set up a clothing store on the sign of Settler to be a shopkeeper. And the magical thing is, these shops not only earn me caps every single day and add them into the workshop, but somehow refresh the shop's cap amount every couple of days. So now I can sell the water I produce every day to the shops for an endless amount of caps, so for a couple of sales I can be completely self-sufficient. With junk running low, I use my newly acquired caps to buy a trader stall, so now I've got steady access to new building materials, and can sell even more every day with the extra caps they have access to. And I just so happen to be sitting on enough water to form the final piece in my survival puzzle. If you cast your mind back to earlier, you'll remember I said I'm slowly dying of radiation from my food, and at this point, I've nearly lost half of my health to this. Combined with disease which can damage your health constantly, well, it was a struggle to stay alive sometimes. But with my newly acquired access to caps, I can now afford to buy a clinic stall and turn a random settler into a fully qualified doctor. I guess even in the wasteland, healthcare still costs a fortune, but at least my backstreet surgeon can cure me of my radiation sickness, and I'm now fully self-sufficient without ever leaving the starting town of Sanctuary. But I'm not satisfied with just surviving in this town, you remember when I said I wanted to thrive, so there's a few town upgrades I can start with, which I can do while I plan out the final build to give me some entertainment, now I no longer need to murder my residents. To attract more settlers, defence needs to be increased, so I hire another guard, and with my access to circuitry from the shops, build a couple of fancy new turrets. And of course people need water, so I expand the purifier area. This definitely isn't just because I want more bottles to sell for myself. I don't think the town would be complete without access to a shopping centre, so after selling off the town water supply, I can afford to build one of each stall, and a spectacular enclosed area for shoppers featuring a couple of seats. Now I've got access to new weapons, armour, medicine, and I even have a bar. Just don't ask me where they get the stock from. With food, water, medicine, and every other need completely taken care of, I just wanted to do one more thing, and that's to bring some wasteland entertainment to Sanctuary, without ever stepping foot outside into the danger. And what better way to do that than by building a custom arena for the townspeople to fight in? And it just so happens that one of the DLCs added in a lovely arena system where I can do just that. I begin by creating a basic shell of the arena so the fights don't cause too much trouble, add a powered door so my volunteers can't escape, and a few benches so people can watch in comfort while dodging bullets. With the shell finished, the magic can happen. I add in an arena contestant stand so I can assign my settlers to fight, add in a siren which calls everyone over to the area to watch the arena battles, and add in a couple of cages which somehow attract raiders and gunners into the area without setting off any of my defences. Again, Bethesda logic cannot be beaten. And after building a safe way to release my captors, by gunshot, it's time to have some fun. Get an unwilling contestant to enter the arena, gather the spectators who've been slowly arriving in town to settle, and sit back and enjoy the show. Okay, let's release the contestants. Good luck, random settler. Ah, what's happening? You're not meant to shoot me. Okay, take two. <laughs> I need to take everyone's guns away and duck for cover. Last time they all wanted some of the action. Okay, surely this goes better. Release the prisoners. Okay, never mind. <laughs> They're going in with the fists now. They've got heart, that's for sure. And of course the raider decides to shoot my head off instead of theirs. Make it make sense. Okay, third time seems to be the charm, although the bandits are ignoring the settlers and are just going for each other. I'll just encourage a few more to go in and fight. I want no part of this. Go on, minions, fight to the death for your leader. Why are you shooting me while getting punched in the head? Things are out of hand. A raid has been killed. My settlers are taking heavy damage. And this one guy is tanking everyone. <laughs> I don't know when this is going to end. Oh, what a tackle. Go on, kick him while he's down. Okay, they've got him. And they've earned me an achievement, well I'm calling that a success. But I do want some more fighting tonight, so let's put a red arena stand for a new team. Okay, you're assigned to this one, and I get stuck into each other. Oh wow, that didn't take long at all. My money is on the hat, she's taking hits but I've got a feeling. And I was right, what a superb leg sweep that was. Finished the job now. Some good hits, and a very nice block. 
Followed by a perfect dodge encounter. Come on. Ooh, turned her back and paid for it. What a win. I owe you a drink. And she's gone. Oh! You're not meant to execute the victor. Well, after that event, I think I've done all I can do in this challenge. You know what? Let's sign off with a bang.